With how popular Maya reps have gotten, you'd think the evidence behind them was rock solid. The truth is, it really isn't. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching. Unfortunately, not the creator of Milo reps. Although, I could call them Wolf reps, Wolf partials, lengthen partials. I can go on for days. If you think I should name them that, leave a comment down below. But let's get back to Maya reps. Maya reps have gotten a lot more popular recently, but what are Maya reps and why should we care? Well, the best way to find that out would be to actually read what the creator of Maya reps has to say, and that is Borge Fagerli. Maya reps are when you essentially perform a first set, performing typically 5 to 20 reps, and then instead of taking your usual rest time of say 1 to 5 minutes, you only rest about 10 to 30 seconds and perform many sets every 10 to 30 seconds thereafter. So essentially, it's one quote-unquote big set, resting 10 to 30 seconds, and then doing mini sets every 10 to 30 seconds for as many sets as you want. But why would you even do Maya reps? Like, what's the point exactly? Well, here's the rationale. According to Henneman's size principle, a relatively well-established principle within sports science and physiology, your body starts recruiting muscle fibers, or rather motor units, from the smallest, aka the slowest twitch fibers, and gradually moves it up to the fastest and biggest muscle fibers as either force production requirements increase, for example, when you lift a heavier weight instead of a lighter weight, or as fatigue sets in and certain fibers are no longer able to contribute much to force production, as would, for example, be the case when you're doing a set of 30 reps and you get to rep 20. So those biggest, fastest twitch muscle fibers supposedly mostly get recruited when you're either lifting a sufficiently heavy weight or when fatigue is set in such that you need to recruit those bigger, faster twitch muscle fibers to lift the weight that you have in front of you. And so part of the idea is that the reason that a set becomes much more effective when you take it closer to failure, which there is some evidence for, is that it is only within those last few reps that those biggest muscle fibers really start working, being exposed to tension, and thus seeing hypertrophy. The idea of my reps is that by only taking 10 to 30 second breaks between the first set and subsequent sets, you maintain that muscle fiber recruitment. In other words, those biggest muscle fibers we really want to grow are active from the get-go in those subsequent smaller sets. And that's because the fatigue that you generated in that first set hasn't had the time to fully dissipate. And so, in order to even start lifting the weight again, you would need to activate those high-threshold big muscle fibers. The idea is essentially, if only those last few reps really target those most important muscle fibers, how can we get more of those last few effective reps? Well, enter myo reps. Let me give you a poor analogy. Let's say, for example, your favorite food was this fast food place at the top of a hill near your house. On average, you want to go to that joint once a day and eat there because it's delicious. But climbing this hill, it's hard work, it takes a lot of time, and it's a lot of effort. And ultimately, it doesn't contribute to you eating that tasty food. So you could make that climb every single day, get up there after a hard hour of climbing, and eventually have your tasty food. But what if you cut out the middleman and instead built your house on top of that hill, next to that fast food joint? By building your own house up there, you can remove the need for that climb altogether and see more of a benefit. Okay, food scientist Milo, I hear you. A very cool analogy. But what does the evidence say? Well, hold up a minute. We don't actually have evidence. That's right. There are no studies on my reps looking at muscle hypertrophy. Or are there? Okay, hold up. Maybe we have some. As Borge points out on his website, there has been one infamous study that still hasn't been published two years later, despite being presented at a conference two years ago. But let me break down what the results are. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of detail available, but let me give you what I know. In this study, they essentially compared a Maya rep approach to a traditional set approach. Both groups saw the same hypertrophy seemingly. However, the Maya rep group actually performed about 25% less training volume for the same hypertrophy. So that's certainly promising. But equally, until I read the full manuscript, that isn't that much to go off of. Is there anything else? Well, when no direct evidence is available, we can use other bodies of evidence to somewhat inform our understanding of how this might work. First off, as I mentioned earlier in the video, repetitions performed closer to failure, where more motor units and muscle fibers might be being activated, do seem to result in more hypertrophy, as was demonstrated in this meta-analysis by Robinson and colleagues. So on that level, when you're talking about a given set, not a MyRep approach, there does seem to be a benefit to performing more reps close to failure. Another body of evidence we can lean on is the rest time research. Indeed, one of the defining characteristics about Maya reps is that they essentially take very short rest durations. They rest for about 10 to 30 seconds between sets. Well, things fall apart a little bit here. 
You generally find worse hypertrophy when you rest for less than 60 seconds, compared to more than 60 seconds between sets. However, the big issue with using this research to inform our understanding of my reps is that they generally equate for the hard number of sets performed, not so much for the volume load, and therefore, they often perform the same number of effective reps in the shorter rest versus longer rest groups. Indeed, if you do three sets, whether you rested for one minute or three minutes, you'll still get the same number of effective reps if both sets or all sets are taken to failure. In this study by Schoenfeld and colleagues, for example, on rest times, they dropped weight set to set in order to keep participants in the target rep range. All of this means that between the longer rest time group and the shorter rest time group, the number of effective reps was actually quite similar. However, there is one study that didn't quite do this. Specifically, in a previous study by long-going colleagues that I've broken down in this video on rest times here, they compared four approaches. Approach one involved resting for one minute between sets. Approach two involved resting for three minutes between sets. Approach three involved resting for one minute between sets, but doing additional sets with the same weight to make up for the additional volume that the three-minute group saw. And finally, approach four involved resting for three minutes between sets, but doing fewer sets so as to equate overall tonnage with approach number one, resting one minute between sets. In other words, in all of these groups, they maintain the same walking weight the whole time. And so if they were able to perform 80% of their max for say eight reps on the first set, by set four, they may have gotten only five reps. And in the short rest group, they would have been performing more sets all of which would have included a lot of effective reps. Compare this to the longer rest three minute group. They were doing fewer sets and therefore fewer effective reps compared to the short rest group that was getting in the same volume load or tonnage. To summarize, the one minute rest group that made up for additional volume load got more effective reps in than the long rest group. So essentially, that is testing the concept of Maya reps. Does taking shorter rest times but getting only effective reps in on each of those subsequent sets actually lead to more hypertrophy? And well, no. They saw the same hypertrophy in the one minute group that did additional sets and thus got more effective reps in compared to the three minute group that got fewer effective reps in. And so, especially if volume load was equated for, if Maya reps were super beneficial, you would expect to see greater hypertrophy in this one minute group. Alas, they didn't. The final area of evidence that we can lean on that is somewhat similar to Maya reps would be drop sets. Indeed, they are a somewhat similar concept to Maya reps in that you're shortening rest times such that each subsequent set, in this case with a lower weight, should be close to failure and thus contain exclusively effective reps. And we do have a meta-analysis by Coleman and colleagues comparing the hypertrophy from traditional set training to drop set training, finding similar hypertrophy, with the kicker that they often took 50 to 70% less time to complete their sessions. So is this strong evidence for my reps? In my opinion, no, and here's why. In these studies, they often equated for volume load. In other words, the drop set group performed additional sets as a means to make up for the difference of performance. Additionally, when you're doing drop sets, we're talking about taking no rest between sets. So just like with the rest time research, there is a bit of a gap to bridge between this and my reps. So you may see similar hypertrophy if you do additional sets to make up for the reduced performance. This is a pretty far cry from the hype I see online for my reps though. To summarize, the rest time data is generally against the idea of my reps being as effective as straight sets on a set per set basis. Likewise, the data on drop sets is also against the idea of my reps being as effective as straight sets on a set per set basis. And the only study on my reps still hasn't been published two years later. So here's my take on my reps. My reps are one of many tools you can use to increase training density, how much training you can get in in a given amount of time while being close to failure. However, because they haven't been studied much, if at all, directly, I would rely on other techniques that have more evidence behind them, such as, for example, drop sets, or even better, if you potentially don't want to compromise on effectiveness, would be paired supersets. I'll have videos on both drop sets and paired supersets down in the description. Finally, let me tell you how to implement my reps if you did want to implement it within your training. First, perform one activation set of five to 20 reps. Then rest for as long as it takes you to get another five reps with the same weight. Do another set. Then do at least as many sets as you would for straight sets. If you're converting straight sets to my rep sets, I would consider doing about 50% more sets at least. So if you wanted to get the stimulus from four straight sets for example, I would recommend at least six my rep sets. That is the video. If you enjoyed me breaking down the science on my reps, what little there is, consider commenting, liking, subscribing. If there's any other techniques or topics you want to see me tackle from a sports science perspective, leave a comment down below and I'll get to it. In the meantime, my subscribers, have a good day and I will see you in the next video. Peace.
But let me break down what the results are. Let me actually look at the results because I don't remember them. 